Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our YouTube live event. We're very glad that you are taking your time out of your night to uh, join us. We got some really good things to go over today. Uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Captain Mac Trapp. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Camden Military Academy. So our topic tonight, we're going to discuss a little bit. We're going to talk about transferring into Camden, um, you know, for the second semester. So we're also, you know, we're going to dive into a couple of different things, but, you know, that's going to be our focus tonight. Uh, so a couple of things that we're going to talk about, just general things about Camden, um, and then we'll dive into specifics so that you can kind of get an idea of how everyday life is on campus uh, from some of our cadets. So we know you're probably looking for a school that offers something a little different than what you've got now, rather that's a private school or a public school that you're in. You know, maybe maybe your son's just not reaching his full potential that that he could be. So maybe it's that he's just getting lost in bigger class sizes. You know, he just doesn't have time management skills, or maybe he just needs to redirect some of his focus uh, to a more positive outlooks. Um, so one thing as far as what we offer here at Camden Military Academy is that we do offer smaller class sizes and, and our big focus is on academics. So we want our guys to succeed uh, to a lot of different capacities, but our focus is on academics. So with smaller class sizes, um, extra time, tutorial periods, mandatory study hall periods, those are just some of the attributes that can contribute to your son reaching his fullest potential. Also, along with that, we do want to let you guys know that, you know, this is we want this to be a very interactive night. So, you know, if you want to ask a question, we're definitely going to try to get those answered for you. Make sure you use the hashtag Camden Military, and that can be done on all of our social media platforms. So make sure you use that hashtag, send out your questions, and we will try to get as many of your questions answered as we can. Make sure to, you know, we love when we do these virtual events that you can kind of, you know, enjoy the comfort of your own home watching us. But reach out to us. We'd love for you to schedule a visit on campus or maybe come to one of our open house events um, and see what we're all about uh, from that from that standpoint. So uh, I guess without further ado, I do want to introduce uh, the cadets we have on tonight. We're also joined by our Dean of Administration and Enrollment, Mr. Casey Robinson. And if you have watched any of our past YouTube live events, you probably, he's going to be the familiar face. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start with introductions. So we'll start with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Casey Robinson, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm Casey Robinson, again, Dean of Enrollment and Administration here at Camden Military. And um, I think the young men are going to tell you how long they've been here. So I'll go ahead and tell you I've been here for this is going into my 24th year. So it's been a, a long ride here for me. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get all your questions answered tonight. Yep. And we'll move on to our next one. So we'll have uh, Mr. Charlie Duke, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hello, uh, I'm Charlie Duke. I'm from Franklin, Tennessee, and this is my second year at Canada Military Academy, and I'm in Alpha Company. Very good. And Mr. Foster, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hi, I'm Nicholas Foster. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. This is my first year and I'm in Delta Company. Uh, local South Carolinian. All right, Mr. Barbu, if you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Hello, my name is Luke Barbu. I'm from uh, Manchester, Michigan. And this is my first year at Camden's uh, Military Academy. And I'm also in Delta Company. Very good. So guys, again, it's great to have, you know, some of the things that we talk about tonight uh, is going to be really good, really valuable to have a cadet perspective on that, uh, especially when it comes to transferring in to Camden and life at Camden, because, you know, when it comes down to it, as far as, you know, cadets transferring in, well, all of our cadets are transferring in from somewhere. So rather that be you know, just starting a new and a fresh from another school, transferring into Camden, you know, that experience can be shared by all across the board with our guys. So they're going to be able to talk, talk a little bit about that tonight, along with some other things. So our goal as far as transferring into second semester, if, you know, if something's not working out with your son where he's at now, you know, we want to let him reach his fullest potential and we want to do everything we can to get him to that point. So one thing I do want to start out with, and uh, I'm going to pass this question over to uh, Mr. Duke, 
is can you tell me, you know, coming from the school you were at before Camden Military Academy, you know, what was your experience like in that school and, and maybe how it's changed since you've been here? Uh, thank you, Captain Trapp. I went to a public school my freshman year of high school, and I went to large classes. Most of my classes had at least 25. Some of them had as much as 35 people in them. And kind of coming to the Camden, my largest class here has 11 people in it. And that's kind of been a big transition for me from large classes, much smaller classes so that I can kind of focus and have time with the teacher one-on-one. -on -one. Very good. And that's one of the things I hear from a lot of our cadets. And that is this, you know, the smaller class sizes, especially coming from the public school system, um, you know, going from almost 30 kids, maybe even more in one class uh, down to an average class size of, of 12. So I do want to uh, just I see Mr. Barbu here. He wanted to, I think, add something to that. So, uh, Mr. Barbu, you want to add to your kind of experience before and after Camden? Yeah, so I uh, went to private and public school before I came to Camden and both schools, I was not always like very focused. Uh, last year, actually, I had pretty bad grades because um, like Duke said, you're in a class with so many people, the teachers and really like their job is just to give out the information and they don't really care too much about your specific grades. And it's really easy to get off track over there. Like there's nobody to tell you that you need to do your homework. So a lot of nights I'd find myself like um, pondering if I should be doing homework or doing something what I want to do. But here you kind of get built into a schedule and you're like, OK, there's time and place for everything. And right now it's time to do homework. And now uh, my grades are significantly better than they were previously. Very good. And that's, you know, as far as mandatory study hall, that was, I think that's what he was referencing. You know, it's that time set aside. So, you know, instead of having the distractions of a phone or some other type of electronics, you know, we set aside a certain time uh, during the night to focus on homework and studying and, and really getting the academics put a focus on that. So speaking of study hall, uh, Mr. Foster, I'm going to just pass this one over to you. And, and can you elaborate on what study hall is and, and kind of how that helped you, um, you know, maybe as far as getting your grades up or maybe just setting you in a schedule to work on homework or studying for a test? Uh, so uh, in my old school, I did not like to do homework and it, it was just a really big bore for me. But now with the study hall with like, what is it? An hour and 30 minutes set aside after school before we go to bed and actually getting homework gives me something to do instead of just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So I actually like having homework and my grades have went from C's and D's to almost all A's. Very good. Yeah, that study hall is a very beneficial aspect, along with some other things. And, and we'll talk about those um, coming up, too, because we like I said, you know, we firmly believe in developing the whole man here and we want our guys to succeed in every capacity. But academics is our big focus. You know, a lot of our guys come in and they're not struck. You know, they're, they're struggling in public school or they're struggling in the private school they're at. And when they get here to Camden Military Academy, you know, we help them find uh, their success. We help them find their potential. Um, and sometimes that isn't even necessarily uh, in the academic side of things. You know, they're more than capable of doing the work. Maybe it's a confidence thing. And so, for example, you know, we use our military program at the school to kind of develop the leadership skills and the confidence to just, you know, raise your hand in class or, or seek help from the teacher and kind of go out of your comfort zone a little bit um, to be more successful. So, again, sometimes it's not just the focus of, you know, I'm not understanding it. I'm just maybe not asking the right questions or maybe I don't have the confidence to speak up in class. So we're we're trying to develop all aspects of of, of everything so that they can succeed in their academics. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about too is, you know, parents and students alike thinking about the decision. I hear this a lot from parents and, and students, you know, coming in or asking me questions is, um, you know, getting to that point, you know, what led up to that point or, or, you know, how did we get to here? So let me ask you this now, Duke, I'll go back to you for this one. Tell me what was 
you know, maybe it was something that you decided was the best decision for you, or maybe your parents, you know, what, what I guess was the decision to make the transition to Camden, you know, to better yourself? Um, my, my transition to Camden from my parents, uh, I was never a bad student in school. I made B's and A mixed in there, but with my parents, my parents expected all A's and they knew I could do it and I could do it here at school. And they felt like after my freshman year, there's better options for me. And we started looking around, we found Camden and I kind of had a choice of where I wanted to go. And I found Camden to have the kind of lifestyle that I wanted. Okay. And so when you talk about, so do just kind of piggybacking off of that question, when you said, when you talk about the lifestyle that you wanted or the things that drew you to Camden, what were, what were kind of the major things that, that you thought, you know, Hey, this might work for me or, Hey, this is, this is cool. I kind of want to check it out. What, what were the things that you thought were interesting that fit you? Uh, two main things really drew me to camp. Well, three, one, I really wanted to be in a school in the South where I was kind of around home and I wanted sports and school. Camden here, we have a ton of sports. We have, I think, 11 sports, or varsity sports. And I, I want to do sports. I love doing sports. And then also uh, our dual enrollment classes. Those three things were kind of the three things that drew me into Camden because nowhere else kind of has it like Camden does. Right. And that's, that's true. That's very true. So we have 13 different varsity sports um, here on campus. And the one thing I always tell parents, you know, I was very involved in athletics because leading up to this position, I was both a teacher and a coach. Um, so when it comes to athletics, this is the perfect place that if you've ever thought about playing a sport or maybe you're interested in the sport um, or maybe you just didn't get any game time play at your last school, this is the place to do it. We have a no cut policy um, for our sport. So basically, if you're coming out and giving it 110 percent, you know, you can let her in that varsity sport. Um, and also going back to what I said earlier about the confidence booster, you know, sometimes that's that's things that guys can find here. For example, if they might be really good at basketball or really good at football, that just adds to that confidence. Um, so, Mr. Barbu, let me ask you that same question, more or less, is what were the things that drew you to Camden? You know, for example, did you look at our social media pages or check out our website? What were some of the things that stood out to you that kind of fit you? So um, my parents have briefly like mentioned the idea of going to military school uh, earlier in the year. And later on, as we got closer to the school year, they told me Camden Military Academy. So I looked up the website and I found it and I was like, man, like, the, like I don't know, just from being on the website. So for a short little time, I was like, these uniforms are really cool. It's not what brought me here, but I always wanted to like go somewhere big for college, like a university. And I talked to Lieutenant Colonel Heflin, the um, Dean of students. And he told me about like this place being really good for colleges. And uh, it's like good to graduate with a diploma from here. And so that was like a big thing for me. I was like, man, if I could go here, do really well in school, and then get help to go to the college of my choice. This is exactly what I want. Like that, that's my final goal. Very good. And that's a good goal to have. You know, we try to set our guys up to be successful um, in any path they choose, rather that's, you know, college, career path, or a military route. You know, we try to prep them um, to the best of our ability. So uh, we did have a question come in. Um, we had a parent ask uh, as far as examples of building your confidence. So um, I'll ask Mr. Foster if you want to answer this one. You know, from the time that you got here, you know, maybe you weren't necessarily struggling with confidence, but, you know, how has Camden helped you with your confidence or maybe even, you know, actually brought you out and kind of, you know, gave you more confidence? So in my old school, I used to be like the quiet kid. I used to like sit in the back of the class, not really speak up that much. But at Camden, I've really – learn to like standing up and talking in front of the class. I like to present projects. I like to just present, talk. Very good. And those yeah. are those are good attributes, you know, um, just in class. You know, I, I can speak from that as myself, you know, just being confident enough to present a group project in school. So that's a perfect example. That's a great example. Um, now, Mr. Barbu, I, I don't know if you played 
uh, sports at your old school. But as far as, you know, athletics and clubs and any extracurricular activities that we have on campus, you know, how does that kind of build into the conf confidence booster too? Were you able to try things here that maybe weren't available to you in your last school? Yeah. So um, before I came here at my old school, I participated in track and ran in football. I mean, and played football. My football team, varsity, was like 75 kids on the team. So that's a lot already. And then the track team, it was co-ed. So we had probably, I want to say 180 people just on the track team. It was a large public school. And I mean, obviously it's track, you get to run, but like, it's not like the same, like you don't get noticed by the coaches because there's, they're looking at so many other people. And then same thing for football, having 74 other kids to compete with. If you joined kind of late, the coaches are like, okay, well, this kid hasn't really been here for too long. Um, we don't know him. He's not going to play that much this season because we have so many other people. But when I came here, we had um, less people on the football team. I'm not sure how many, but at the beginning of the season, it was nice because we had like a week of tryouts and then the coaches like look at all of us and tested us for our abilities and like, okay, this guy's going to do this. This guy's going to do that. Everybody had a place on the team, like defense, offense. It was great. We had that week of tryouts and then I ended up playing a starting linebacker. Very cool. Yeah, and one of the things, too, I think what you're referencing is we have a, a summer, a week summer camp. So a lot of our guys are from, you know, all over the country. This year alone, we've got, you know, 30 different states represented. So um, we have kind of a summer camp for our football program, and uh, all of our football players get to come in a week early. You know, that's a time that they kind of get to build as a team. You know, it's really just players and coaches right then. So good camaraderie builder and uh, kind of sets us up for the season. So I'm going to – um I see uh, our Mr. Casey Robinson. So uh, I'm going to pass this over to you. I think you've got something to add to that that end. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch base about the confidence part. Um, and I bet all of these guys can kind of agree with me on this. But one thing that we like to do here is kind of put guys in roles that they typically wouldn't be in. So kind of like what you you know alluded to earlier. So, you know, we want to put them in some leadership posi positions to kind of see how they react to that and see if they're going to be a, uh, a good, strong leader. And it may be the leadership position be in athletics or it may be in the military part or it may be in the classroom or in the spiritual realm or whatever. So, um, you know, I just kind of want to let parents know that that's a big deal for us because, you know, a lot of the students that come to us are a little frustrated, kind of beaten down maybe. And so this gives them a chance to kind of build up that self-confidence again, start feeling good about themselves. And, you know, let's face it, not every kid's a straight A kid, uh, you know, straight A student. So sometimes B's or or the max, but so we might not um, can, you know, focus on academics right away because there's other things, you know, not everything's found in a book, not everything's about grades. So I'm um, definitely going to try to, you know, build up self-esteem. And once you have success in one area, the other areas, it, it all takes care of itself. That's it. Yeah. yeah and I always think it's neat. Um, you know, we have guys come in and, and because of our military aspect of it. So we're army based JROTC. So our guys are able to achieve rank. So, you know, they come in um, with no rank and they're able to, you know, basically gain rank. And guys always ask me, well, you know, how do I gain rank or how do I do this? Well, you know, A, do what you need to do. And then B, show us that you can earn that rank and handle that responsibility. And it's the coolest thing, you know, just seeing guys come in, you know, and work their way up from private, you know, then to corporal and then all of a sudden they're a staff sergeant and then all the way up to working their way up to battalion commander, which is the highest ranking cadet. So, um, it's just neat to kind of see how they find their confidence. And again, it's, it's not only in the classroom, but, you know, in, in the barracks and everywhere else. So um, one of the things that we always get asked is, you know, how does it work as far as in the barracks and especially with TAC officers? You know, I always hear from parents, you know, they see it on our website. You know, the guys say, well, who are these big, scary guys that, you know, look like they're always screaming or look like they want to hurt me? Um, so I, I think Duke, this is your third, third year or second year at Camden. So you've been in the same company the entire time. Can you tell me a little bit, um, just tell me what attack officer is and, and kind of what attack officer is to you. 
Um, our, so all of our TAC officers all retired uh, Army uh, NCOs, so sergeants, staff sergeants, uh, SSCs, first sergeants, all, all of the above. And they're kind of our father figures away from home. Um, all of our companies have two TACs, and they alternate every two days. Um, they're there whenever, whenever you have a question, you have a problem, you go to them, and they're kind of your link to getting things done. If you have an injury, if you have just a problem going on, you could talk, you go talk to them and they kind of solve the problems and they're there to fight your fights that you don't always know about. They kind of back, they back you up on and put your name out there so you can experience more of those things around school. Very good. Yeah, we have, you know, our, our TAC officers, that's, that's kind of how I describe them perfectly. You know, they're, they're the mom and dad away from home. You know, they're going to be um, getting on you when you need it, but they're also going to be patting you on your back when you're doing good things. So, um, you know, our TAC officers, again, they're, they're great guys and, and they're really looking to, to better our guys and, and, and work with them. Um, so one of the things that uh, I want to talk about, too, is just, you know, going back to transferring into Camden. So like I stated earlier, you know, basically all of our cadets are transfer students at, at some point in time. So what do we have set in place? And, and Barbu and Foster, I know this is your first year here. So uh, Barbu, I'm going to throw this one at you and, and, and talk about this a little bit. But, you know, what do we have set in place to, to make that transition? Because sometimes it can be, you know, it's it's different coming from, you know, a public school or a private school that's not a military school to a military school. So talk about how, how we make that transition, you know, easier on you guys. So one of the ways that coming here was really easy for me is because uh, immediately it was like all the faculty or big people at the school already knew my name and they really greeted me nicely. And I was like, man, what in the world? These people already know who I am, like as if I've talked to them before. And it's almost as if they knew what I was all about. Like they helped me um, with a roommate, kind of like assign a roommate uh, who's alike to you. And they kind of tell you, like brief you about everything, like meeting the tech. He helped me with all the beginning stuff. It wasn't hard because there was not too many people at the time. And it was kind of just a uh, time for him to personally help me with like my room and getting ready and all the stuff that I'll need for school. So I don't know. I thought that was really nice. Yeah, it is. And I always tell the guys when they talk to me, you know, when I'm taking them around campus or showing them campus and they're thinking about making the decision is, you know, they always kind of talk about that. And, and I always tell them, you know, nobody's going to get mad at you for asking questions. So, you know, that's my biggest piece of advice is, you know, ask questions, you know, they, they might, you know, ruffle your feathers a little bit about it, but they're not going to get mad at you. You know, they want you to learn. Um, so Foster, I, I know you put, put your hand up on that one. So if you want to talk to this, to the same point a little bit on, you know, that, that transition in, um, go right ahead. So with that transition in, um, I'm just talking about like the beginning of the year stuff. So, I actually did the the three week uh, summer program and it really helped me for that first two weeks where we didn't have any communication and it really helped like bond with new cadets because I already had like two other cadets were that were at the summer camp with me and it just really helped me out a lot. Very good. Yeah, a lot of our guys, you know, they'll try the summer school program to see, kind of get their feet wet, you know, get to know their TAC, TAC officers, some of the faculty members here on campus, um, and see if it's a, a good fit for them or, or they like it. Um, one thing, too, you know, speaking of that that two-week first period um, that you don't have communication, uh, you know, from home and, and you're kind of away from parents. So we had a question come in, and Duke, I'm going to give this one to you. Um, you know, you're not too far away, but, you know, homesickness doesn't really have a, a length of, of amount, you know, away. So how did you deal with homesickness? For me, I haven't had a super major problem with homesickness since I've been at school. Um, I have my phone, so I text and call my parents uh, all, all the time. I On Saturdays, that's kind of my day. I call all my family, all like uncles, aunts, cousins. And that's kind of my way that I connect back to my family. And we have our furloughs. We have special leaves. And I'm still able to go on. And I'm able to kind of experience little bits and pieces of my family's going on while still being at school. 
Okay. Yeah. And that's another thing too. That's a good thing you brought up as far as furloughs. You know, I always get um, asked, you know, how often do cadets get to go home or, you know, can we go home and can we visit home? So uh, we do have furloughs and and I'm going to give this one to Mr. Barbu to talk a little bit about furloughs um, because we do want the guys, again, we going back to building the the man in its entirety is, you know, there, there needs to be that time that you get to spend with family. So uh, Mr. Barbu, I know you're a little bit farther away up in Michigan. So, you know, how important are those furlough weekends and, you know, how do they work? So those furlough those, I mean, those are definitely really important because my drive is like an 11 hour drive. So I'm obviously really far, but we have furlough weekends. I, I'm not sure how often they are, but you could go home for like three, four days, or you could have a special leave where you kind of talk to somebody of the faculty, like the commandant, headmaster, TAC, uh, all set it up so you could leave for like a special event, like family event that's really important or a religious event. Um, and so I use that in for furloughs or leaving on the weekends. Like if your parents pick you up, you have to have 25 merits, which you earn by just doing stuff around campus, like always doing the right thing. Um, something called SG duty, cleaning your room, just always being there. And the tax notice and they write you um, merit points, but also, I think that coming here as a new student, like during the next semester would be easy because you talked about the two weeks of not having your phone. How I kept myself occupied was I would always, like I got myself involved with football, obviously. I would talk to other people, like it's really good time to get to know all the people around you. And, um, I don't know, I started doing new hobbies like playing guitar and writing and reading stuff that I wouldn't do too much at home. But I think that it'd be easier as a new student now because you already have yourself occupied with school kind of puts you in that place already. So you're already busy. Right. And you brought up a good point. And, and I, I like when uh, when guys notice that or because I think it's the coolest thing is, you know, taking advantage of something like this, you get to meet people and meet guys that you would have never met in your corner of the world. So, you know, coming from Michigan, you know, you might get to meet guys from Florida or guys from California. So just guys that you would never have met before and maybe that you end up sharing lifelong friendships with. So I think that's, you know, a neat part of, of uh, coming to a school like this. Um, now, Duke, I saw your hand go up on that one. So uh, you wanted to talk a little bit about furloughs? Yes, sir. Um, when for furloughs, a lot of times I know a lot of people go a little nervous about it when they live across the country or in other countries. And I, my roommate personally lives in Columbia and he's offered, and a lot of times, a lot of people live in South Carolina. We have furloughs. You can go home with them. And even though you can't go home to your own home, a lot of times other people's family are just accepting. They're just is nice. It's just a nice way to change up the pace. So even if you live far away from school, there's still those opportunities to kind of get off campus and see the outside world. Very good. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, again, that's that's the most important part. Like I was saying with the homesickness, you know, it's not necessarily uh, the distance, you know, and so on furlough weekends and stuff like that, um, you know, you can do that. So, uh, Foster, I know you, you, you've kind of met some people from different places, and so you've had some personal experience with that. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, sir. So my roommate is actually from Panama City, Panama, and he is like really cool. I would have never met anyone from South America um, probably ever in my life, but I really like uh, the opportunity that you get to see in Camden. Right. And exactly going, you know, going back to that, that same thing, that's, that's just one of the neat things. And so again, kind of getting to build friendships and kind of getting to meet people that you wouldn't have normally met. Um, so one thing that I want to talk about too, is, you know, one of the big questions that I get, especially uh, in the position that I have with, with students coming in is what, if you as a cadet, a current cadet could give one piece of advice to a student that's um, kind of unsure about the decision or maybe on the fence about it, uh, what would be that one piece of advice? So Mr. Barbu, I'm going to go to you first and just 
What kind of advice would you give a cadet if he was a little unsure about, you know, attending Camden military? So what I would tell them is talk to people who are in clubs, like get involved with clubs, try to get out there and not just sit in your room all day or sports kind of get involved with a bunch of things. Um, talk to the people around you. Like everybody here is really like welcoming. It seems like they're always really excited to see somebody new. And so you could kind of become friends with somebody really quick and go play like basketball outside on the court or something, or go to the weight room. I don't know. There's so many activities that you could do and just to occupy yourself instead of sitting in your room, like thinking about everything, like, Oh my gosh. Um, I think it's a great idea to try and like get to know where you are and what's around you, the people. Very good. All right, Mr. Foster, I want to get your same opinion on that as you know, what would be a piece of advice that you would give a cadet who's a little unsure? I would definitely say choose to come here because after the first uh, four weeks, I started to learn to love it. And there was just so many extracurricular activities that I was able to do. Like, for example, I'm in the blackjack drill team where we get to flip and spin rifles and go to different competitions. And it's really fun. So if you're on the fence about coming here, I, I think it's depending on how you are or what you need, definitely come here. Good. Great. Well, that's, and, and again, that's, that's a great thing. Both, both of you guys gave great answers on that about being involved and stuff, because I think that again, just goes back to what we talked about. Um, Mr. Casey Robinson, did you want to add something to that? Yeah. I just wanted to mention, you know, yeah, be, we're fully aware that most guys, this wasn't their idea initially, you know, to come to military school. So, um, you know, once it's introduced to the, to the student, I would certainly say come visit campus. Um, I think that really, uh, sways a lot of people's decision um, once they get here and realize that it's really not maybe what they've seen in the movies and, you know, um, what all the media kind of builds it up to be and, and even their friends build it up to be. Um, because, you know, I'm originally from South Carolina and we have, yeah, we have Nicholas originally from South Carolina, but, um, you know, I was, I was having dinner with some friends some people I'd met up in Nashville a couple of weeks ago and they had grown up here. And he was like, yeah, when I was in high school, my, uh, my parents threatened me with came to military, you know, so it's, we, we don't want it to, to be a threat, you know, come see what it's all about. It's a great opportunity for these guys. And, um, you know, again, most young men, when they come and they're a little reluctant, they get here, they see the campus, they meet people, they meet other guys that are very much like them. And um, yeah, and they decide it's a lot easier to do the right thing when everyone else is trying to do the right thing versus trying to be odd man out back at home. So come visit. Yeah. And, and I think that makes the world of difference. I know that, you know, when I talk to parents and stuff like that, if they've they've looked on our website, they've kind of looked into it a little bit, but really coming and seeing campus and seeing what we're all about is is uh, by far the best thing that you can do. So you know, if you'd like to set up a campus tour or like to come see us, you know, just give us a call, email us um, and let us know. So we did have a question come in um, as far as education, you know, speaking to education a little bit more. So uh, we offer uh, along with our high school credits, we also offer dual enrollment courses. And Duke, I think you mentioned that earlier about the dual enrollment uh, classes, the college classes. So uh, talk about that a little bit. You know, how does how does an average class size of 12 in a college class compare to, you know, your freshman year of 300? Um, for me, my college classes, uh, I've taken at least five college classes now. And not one has had a class bigger than 10 people in it. And that's a totally different experience going from a college level course with a professor that can focus on you, which not only having that, but also having the ability to get so many college credits that I'm able, I'm able to be able to graduate, hopefully a, uh, with only three years in college instead of four. And it's really cool to be able to kind of get both my high school experience while also getting those college degrees or college credits, sorry. Yeah, and, and you know, I always tell the guys to just take advantage of that when you can, um, especially if you're, you know, a junior or a senior. Um, those are important years. So just adding that on to uh, 
uh, going into college, like I said, it's just going to pay off uh, more so now than you think. Um, so another thing, too, is, you know, we had a question about as far as the public to private school. So um, we are a private school. So as far as our education goes, you know, we get big questions about um, ADD, ADHD, uh, IEPs, 504 plans, stuff like that. So um, we do have our, as far as ADD and ADHD, um, that's not an issue for us. So we, we will work through that. You know, um, a lot of our guys have had issues with that. Um, and, and really, they've, they've seen a big difference between the time they got here um, and the time they left. Uh, also, when it comes to, you know, IEP plans or 504 plans, you know, we have our own um, stipulations on that. You know, a lot of the things that we do, for example, smaller class sizes, um, extra time in the classroom, uh, more individualized approach to our learning, we kind of cover a lot of the bases that are already laid out in those plans. Uh, but we do our best to accommodate those. So, you know, if you have questions about that, definitely reach out. We could go uh, more in depth. And uh, I'm also going to let um, Casey talk about that a little bit, kind of go a little more in depth on, on that end. So, Casey, go ahead. Yeah, just, you know, as part of the application process, we ask families to submit an IEP or 504. So um, in addition to ADD and ADHD, if they have, you know, other mild learning challenges, um, dysgraphia, dys, uh, um, dyslexia, you know, some of those, they're, they're still okay and still workable for us. We have students to take oral testing versus, you know, written things like that. They can take in, you know, digital, uh, they need to take notes digitally versus handwriting. So um, there's, there's accommodations that can be made. Um, but for a lot of these guys, especially the ADD and ADHD students, they're on meds. A lot of them are able actually to, to wean off the medication after being in our program, such a structured environment with, with a good routine every day and, you know, very few surprises in the schedule. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to add that for anybody. And we do have three nurses on staff who dispenses the medications to the students that are, that are on meds. And actually about a third of our students, new students each year are ADD or ADHD. So um, pretty typical that we see those type students. Right. And uh, we did have another question come in, and I want to remind you guys, definitely, you know, if you have questions, um, use that hashtag in the military, throw them out on any of our social media platforms. We'll even answer, you know, you can Snapchat us uh, at Camden Military. Uh, but the question was, is why did you choose CMA over other boarding schools? So this is a good one. Um, and, I, you know, we, we did touch on this a little bit, but I'm going to go back to you guys and, you know, because I'm sure that of, of all the boarding schools across the U.S., you know, maybe we weren't the first you looked at or maybe, uh, you know, you ended up coming to us because of other reasons. So uh, do maybe talk to this a little bit, you know, just talking with your parents making their decision and you making your decision, you know, what was the deciding factor for CMA over, you know, another type of boarding school? I definitely think, as I talked about before, the sports and the location in the South for me, my parents really wanted a school that had really good academics. That's, that's what they really looked for. As long as I had good academics and I was okay with it, they were pretty okay with it. And Camden had all that. We've got a ton of honors classes and a ton of dual enrollment classes, and that kind of fit the bill for both of us and kind of made a good arrangement. Very good. And Mr. Barbu, I kind of want to ask you the same thing as, you know, um, what, what was kind of the deciding factor on you coming to CMA over, you know, other boarding schools? So my parents were looking at a um, couple other military schools and me and my mom actually toured one of them. And the kind of deciding factor for my mom is she saw the barracks that they had compared to ours and like the food the classrooms, I don't know, the programs were just not nearly as good as Camden's were. Like, I don't know, these barracks, when I got here, I was like, man, good thing I wasn't at that other place, honestly, because that other place, there's like, I don't know, it was like cement walls with like wires on the top. It, it did not look like the ideal scenario for me. But yeah, the classes and also a really big thing was the staff. Like um, my parents became friends with some of the staff members. And I don't know, that kind of got like my mom's in some Facebook chat, I believe, called Camden Prayer Moms or something. And she kind of likes how there's a community for all the parents who sent their kids here. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing. You know, uh, we're very much so 
um, family oriented. We've got kind of a, a feel to our campus that's not an institution feel. Um, it was kind of funny on one of the tours I was doing uh, not too long ago. You know, the kid, we were walking around campus. I was showing him around. He's like, sir, there's a lot less barbed wire here. There's actually no barbed wire. And I just thought that was so funny because, you know, that's kind of that. That's why once they get on campus, they see that, you know, we're very um inviting campus. I mean, it's not, you know, we don't have these big pillars. We don't have these big cement walls and barbed wire. You know, we're a lot different than, uh, you know, what some people think. And um, Barbu, you brought up something about the barracks. So uh, you and Mr. Foster are in the same barracks. So uh, Foster, if if you could maybe just elaborate on, you know, how the barracks are laid out or, you know, um, maybe how you like them, because I know you're in Delta Company. So uh, the barracks are all different depending on the company. Um, in summer school, I was in Bravo. Now I'm in Delta. And uh, the beds are really comfortable. Uh, there's water fountains. There's latrines or bathrooms, which are, they're both nice. Um, shiny floors. Um, overall, just good rooms. Very good. Yeah. And we've got, so just speaking to that a little bit, we've got five different barracks on campus. So basically how we decide um, what barracks your son goes to, it's all just where we need him at. Um, you can request a certain barracks, you know, for example, if you come to an open house event um, or, you know, you come to our campus and you like one of the barracks, you can put in a request for that. Uh, can't be guaranteed, but we can, you know, we can do our best to accommodate that. So, um, let's see here. We had another question come in and this is, uh, this is a good one. So uh, like, like we talked about at the start, you know, um, none of you guys transferred in mid semester or mid year, but you know, you did transfer in, um, you know, from another school or, or at one time you were a transfer student to Camden. So do you think, uh, based on your opinion and, and basically how you felt about the situation, did you think it was hard to, uh, fit in, quote, unquote, or did you, you know, feel like it was a little hard to make friends or, or be social? And Duke, I'm going to let you answer this one and talk about this one a little bit, as you know, just how did you feel? Did you feel it was a hard thing to do to kind of acclimate to Camden when you first got here? Um, I'll tell you what, I don't think it was a problem at all for me I getting acclimated. When I came in, I came in on the Sunday with every other new cadet coming into campus, and when you kind of all get thrown in the pot, you all figure you make friends, and you, you, you make those bonds with people right off the bat and you figure, you go, that's my person. I need to be with them and they're there for me. And those people, I keep in contact with, even if they graduated, if they've gone to another school, they're the kind of people where from day one, you can just kind of tell that they're there for you if you're there for them. And even for like our cadets where uh, last semester, whenever we had new cadets that came in after winter break, though we still have those exact same kind of bonds where they come in and when a new cadet comes in, everybody crowds around. They try and meet the new cadet. And they're like, hi, my name's Yadia. Yada. I'm Cadet Duke. And it's always a cool experience to watch the cadet. You can see they're a little nervous coming in. Everybody's like, what's up? And it's a pretty cool experience. I, I, I've heard from multiple people that came in last semester. That was always a cool kind of thing where everybody, they're like, what if nobody talks to me and everybody's ready to go? Yeah, and, that, you know, that's one thing we talk about here a lot is, you know, we use the slogan, a lot of times you'll hear uh, the brotherhood or brotherhood amongst guys. And, you know, the thing is, is right off the bat, you know, you all have kind of common interest, you know, to share or a common thing is that you're at Camden. So, um, you know, right off the bat, you're able to kind of touch base with your roommate, your touch base with your TAC officer. And, you know, I've heard guys say that it, it's, it's really not a hard transition coming into Camden. Um, so another question that came in, and uh, I'm going to let Mr. Barbu answer this one, is uh, what is your favorite spot on campus? And if it's Tuesday, which today is, I'm sure right after at 3.30 when Chick-fil-A got there, it's probably the Carlisle House. Yes, yeah, sir. So um, the lines are usually big at the Carlisle House on Tuesdays because we always have Chick-fil-A. And I don't have Chick-fil-A where I'm from. So that's like a huge thing. I would get myself like three chicken sandwiches because I got to take advantage of it when I can. But the Carl House is really cool because um, on Tuesdays we have Chick-fil-A. Every other day we have Papa John's pizza. I love that pizza. There's a whole variety of ice creams, candies, snacks, and you could buy 
using a card that the school gives you. And um, there's a bunch of people in there. I think there's like three or two TVs that people are always watching football games or playing video games. There's a bunch of pool tables, air hockey, foosball tables. There's so many kids in there. Like that was one of the things for me when I first came in here that I was like, man, this is the place to go. This is the social spot because everybody's always here hanging out with each other. And I just met all these kids from other companies that I wouldn't have unless I came here. And it's nice because it was close to my barracks. It's right across from the pool. It's just a good area. Yeah, the Carlisle House is pretty popular for our guys. I always, you know, describe it as basically a cadet lounge. It's a place they can go um, to meet up. You know, for example, if you've met a guy, you're in Delta Company, he's in Alpha Company, you may meet up in class. It's a good place to kind of meet up in the afternoons or on the weekends. Like Mr. Barbu said, you know, play some pool, watch TV, um, kind of hang out. So it's a nice common area. Um, Casey, I, do you want to add something to uh, to that? Yeah, just, you know, just kind of remind the viewers and, and maybe any prospective students watching that, you know, these are regular teenage boys. So, you know, they like to be social. They like to stay busy. They like doing, you know, doing stuff and getting involved in different activities. And just like today, I think maybe Duke was involved with, we have a junior leadership on campus today. And um, so do you ever get to see a girl? Yes. You know, that you're not going to school with them, but, but they're here, um, you know, and also we do a lot of off-campus activities um, to keep them busy, NFL games, NBA games, things like that. So um, we're a school where it's easy to let boys be boys. And, and that's kind of important nowadays, we think. Um, you know, it, it's not a one size fits all in the classroom or even outside the classroom. So, um, you know, a, a girl can pay attention to a lecture for, you know, two or three hours and not miss a beat. Um, if you're a typical red blooded American teenage boy, you probably have about 20 minutes time span. So, um, you know, our classes are, are about 40 minutes each. So we try to keep that active engagement. And um, again, it's all about just staying engaged, um, doing activities, playing sports and, and academically. Right. 100 percent. And that's what that's what we really try to push for our guys is just find a place to get involved. And again, here's here's the place to do it. Now, we had a really good question come in. And Casey, I'm actually going to toss this one back over to you. Um, so as far as transferring in from a block schedule to our schedule, you know, how problematic is that um, transferring in? Yeah, that's a good question. All right. Kind of complicated question, but a good question. So um, here at CMA, we operate on a traditional schedule. So that means six classes a day. Um, and again, the periods last 40 minutes each. So very much like most of the parents probably went to school. Um, nowadays, students or most students in high schools, at least, are on a block schedule where they take four classes first semester, different set of classes second semester, or they may have A-B days where they take one set of classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a different class Tuesday, Thursday. Regardless, um, block schedule is a little more challenging, but um, it can usually happen without any problems. Um, what we need to do though, is if you're on a block schedule, you wanna make the decision sooner rather than later. So if you're considering a second semester transfer, contact this ASAP, um, because we wanna make sure that we're not throwing anyone under the bus and, and uh, you know, making them lose credits with the transfer um, you know, mid-year. Um, but for the most part, um, the way that works is the, the student would basically have, if you're taking a, a four by four block, so if you're in a block schedule, your classes typically end first semester, sometime around Christmas, either before or just after. Um, but if you came to Camden, you would be able to continue to enroll in those courses for the rest of the school year. So it allows your grades a chance to go up, um, which, which is huge. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so don't panic if you're on a block schedule. We can usually make it work, but do contact us. We, we want to make sure that you know, we're not going to hinder anybody's uh, journey towards graduation. Yeah, very much so. And again, like Casey said, if you have questions about that, um, or want to talk a little bit more about that, feel free to give us a call, um, email us, and, and we can definitely talk through that. Um, now, one thing I do want to point out is uh, if you've seen our guys tonight, two of them are in a certain uniform, and then one of them it is a little bit different uniform. So uh, today we had a pretty cold day on campus. It was rainy. It was nasty. Um, it was not a fun day. So um, Duke, why don't you tell us, so on days like that, you would wear the uniform you are in right now. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uniforms? Tell us about the one you're in and maybe the ones that you wear, you know, on a regular basis. 
All righty. So the uniform that you'll you see me and Cadet Barbu in right now is called our ACUs, OCPs. Some people call them camis. That's kind of what you get. Everybody matters like a soldier wearing them, stuff like that. But that's what we wear whenever it's really rainy because you don't want to get our uniforms that Foster's wearing. Because that's what we normally wear where it's the gray shirt. There's blue pants on bottom. That's what we wear most days. I say 95% of the time. That's what we wear to class. And we go to all of our meals in that. But whenever it's real nasty, windy, cold, we'll wear ACUs and OCPs. And then another uniform we have is our parade uniform, which that is where whenever we have our parades or any special ceremonies or events, we'll get to that. And that shows all of our decorations, all of our ribbons, our rank, and any other like information, any awards we've won. And then there's also our PT uniform, which that's, but it's just shirt and, t or shirt and shorts. And that's what we would do our PT, do our running and all the physical activity in. Yeah. And so a lot of different uniforms to be in. And, and you know, that's, again, why they're um, in that uniform today, because it was just a cold and nasty day. Uh, the other thing, too, is I want to talk about. So another big question that I get just, you know, from parents and students alike is uh, haircuts. So when they come to us as far as haircuts, what do haircuts look like? Do I have to shave my head? You know, what what is the what is the protocol with haircuts. So, um, Mr. Foster, you've got a, you've got a nice little, uh, do going on. So I'm gonna let you talk about that a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about haircuts, kind of what we require and what we don't require? Yes, sir. So the uh, the maximum that you can have is a two on the top and one on the sides. And whenever, um, there's a barber that comes on campus all the time and you'll see on cadet Barbu's hair, he just got one recently, and whenever you get a haircut, it looks just like that. Okay, so Mr. Barbu, I know you've got a you've got a little bit of a high and tight right there. Was that a was that something you wanted done, or you know, because I know that you know everybody thinks when they first come to us that that's part of the you know the boot camp or the military school that we're going to shave your head. Is that is that the case? No. So what other students actually do is they kind of like request, like, hey. Uh, I don't really want it all shaves off on the top, but for me, I'm like, uh, I don't really care who do I have to impress over here, you know, kind of thing. Like, I'm not worried about what other people are caring about my hair. So I'm just like, yeah, just cut my hair. Like you usually would just buzz it. I got it done like maybe a week ago and it's fine. Like right before then I had it pretty long because I had a, family event and my mom wanted it for the pictures but as soon as I got back I went to the barber on my own choice and I was like yeah you could cut my hair now yeah you opted with the low maintenance cut nothing wrong with that exactly um, so let me ask you this now I know uh we referenced this just a minute ago and, and Duke you were a part of this is um you know junior leadership other off-campus things, other clubs that we have on campus, you know, what is the best way for cadets, especially transferring in mid-year? So um, I know none of you guys did that, but uh, cadets coming in mid-year, what, what are their, what are their ways that they can connect to guys that, um, you know, have been here throughout the entire year? And Duke, maybe you can speak to that a little bit too. Uh, I would say the best way, which Cadet Barbie spoke on this, which is the best advice to new cadets, which I tell all new cadets I've ever given tours or met, Go do sports and go do clubs. If you can do, if you're a new cadet, we'll automatically accept you. We'll accept you into any of our clubs and you'll have a grace period where you can get caught up, figure out what's going on. And that's how you meet people. People love to meet new people around here. That's just new ideas, new inspiration. And there's so many different clubs. Personally, I'm, I'm a part of most of the clubs on campus and I really pride myself on that because it's always, I always have something going on. It always kind of keeps my day interesting and new. And like today I was giving tours to uh, other uh, teens in the Kershaw County area around our campus. We were talking about leadership styles and then, and then tomorrow I have a wrestling meet. And then this weekend I have a camping trip and there's all my weekend is, is never the same. It's always different. And that's due to clubs and sports that I do. Yeah. Just getting involved. You know, I, I would say that's the best thing is just jump right into it. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be wide open. You're going to learn a lot in a very short period of time, but, you know, jump in, embrace it, ask questions, get to know different guys and just kind of lose yourself in the immersion of the school. 
Um, so we did have another question come in, and this is a good one. Um, so I'm going to let each of you guys speak to this and kind of give your own account of this. But uh, if you had to do a little self-reflecting or you had to kind of, you know, see where you were from where where you came from to where you are now, what would you say is the biggest change um, that you've seen in yourself since you've been here? And, and Mr. Barbu, I'll start with you. Um, you know, what's what's the biggest difference you've seen in you? So before I came here, like I said, I was at a big public school. Um, all I was concerned for at the time was like kind of having fun and hanging out with my friends and talking to girls, yada, yada, the same like high school boy kind of thing. But I came here and it really gave me a lot of time to reflect upon the important matters of life. Like, what do I actually need to worry about right now? And that really helped because some of the staff talked to me like, what do you want to do after high school? And I, before I came here, I didn't put too much thought into that. Like I kind of knew what I'd like to do, but it wasn't something like important to me. And I realized like, hey, I want to go to university after high school. And that really put me on track with striving for all A's in all my classes. Like uh, before then, my grades were really bad at my old school because I, I just didn't care. I had no important goals. But being here really um, put me in that mindset for what I want, like where I want to be after high school. And this place will set you up. That, I think I previously talked about that briefly. But yeah, no, it really gave me time to like um, realize Hey, you could kind of achieve anything as long as you put forth effort and work towards it. it. As long as you actually want to, and it's important to you, then you could go get it. Very good. Very good answer. Um, Mr. Foster, what about you? If you had to self-reflect, um, you know, from where you were to, to now, what would, what would be the biggest change uh, that you've seen in yourself? Uh, I would personally say, by far leadership like before I used to be always the follower but now I actually am like the one that goes out there and tries to help out new people tries to do the right thing all the time and just lead good very good very good all right Mr. Duke last but certainly not least what would be the difference the biggest difference in uh Mr. Mr. Duke I would say my biggest, my biggest difference is probably discipline. Uh, my ability to kind of wait and have patience and see how things develop, keep my mouth shut, not run my mouth, and kind of wait and make the right decisions and have the discipline to make myself be able to go out and study and do hard work and be proud of things that I put my hands on. Very good. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. You know, just having that self-confidence and kind of finding – Finding your direction and finding yourself, thats thats those are all good and great things. Uh, another question we did have is, um, as far as teachers at CMA compare to teachers at the, the last school you were at, how do our teachers uh, differ? And again, I'm just going to get you guys to talk about that. Duke, I know you wanted to talk about this a little bit, but how are our teachers different here um, you know, than, than other places you've been as far as school? I would say our teachers are so much different in that they they make you feel like a little bit like a part of the family. Um, last night we had a wrestling match and I had three of my teachers come out and they cheered us on and we were at a away game. We weren't at Camden in the military. We went to another uh, high school and that was just really supportive seeing they come out, they're cheering us on. They still to, to the last cadet wrestled. And in, in public school, you don't have teachers do that. They have their own lives, which is not a bad thing, but here, they really invest in us and they love to see us develop as grown men. And it's just really cool for me. Very cool. Yeah. And it is, you know, we've got, as far as our faculty uh, goes, we've got a great, great group of teachers and instructors here. And, and I've always heard good things about them. And, you know, speaking to when I was a teacher, you know, I was the same way. I, I wanted to, to try to help these guys personally reach their success because you see these guys come in when they first get here to the time that they leave. And it's just a vast difference, a, a great difference. Um, so 
With that being said, um, as far as wrapping it up tonight, I hope we have answered a lot of your questions that you've had. I hope we've covered a lot of things you were curious about. Um, the last thing that we are going to do, though, is I do want to let these three guys reach out and just say something to mom and dad. So, Mr. Barbu, uh, for mom and dad watching, you know, let them know anything you want, how you're doing, or if you just want to give them a little shout out. Um, hello. I don't know if you guys are watching. I powered off my phone. But um, I'm doing really good, I guess. I'm glad to be here tonight. It's really cool experience. Uh, I was surprised because I'm a new kid and people are already, like, getting me involved. Obviously, like, I wanted to. But it's just nice to know that I, like, can be involved and I don't have to be here for multiple years to actually get somewhere. Very good. And Mr. Foster, give a shout out. Hi, hey, Mom. Uh, I, I talked to you before the uh, YouTube live. So, hi. Uh, I can't wait for Friday where I get to come see y'all. And one of my teachers actually said to Dad that uh, for good luck with the um, bodybuilding competition. Very good, very good. All right, Mr. Duke, send your shout out for us, bud. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm ready to see y'all next week. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to see y'all. I'm ready to see Hayes, Bennett, and I'm just the rest of the family. Uh, and I'm just listening to what you told me, dad. Matthew 634, just went for every day to take a shape. Thank y'all. There you go. Well, thank you guys so much again for joining us tonight. Um, it's been a really good session and look forward to speaking to some of you, if you want to, again, if you want to make a campus tour or you want to come see what we're all about in person, uh, definitely reach out to us. But uh, I hope wherever you are tonight, uh, you have a good rest of your evening and look forward to talking to you soon.